Hey everyone, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Kelhaven Ranch. Today we're putting four different types of feeders on our strong hives. Um, I want to feed them first, get them going, because if you put the feed on the weak hives right off the bat, they're going to end up being robbed. So we want to get the strong hives fed and get them going first. That's what we're doing today. I'm going to be running back and forth grabbing stuff. I'll do some post editing that, that'll help. But there are bees everywhere. It's wonderful. Okay, I'll get started. <clears throat> okay, to answer the very first question, why am I not using smoke? Don't need it. I don't want them consuming and hoarding down their food, gobbling it down, thinking it's a forest fire and they gotta move. I want them not touching any stores they have left and not wasting it. So no smoke. They can put up with me. Simple as that. All right, first hive we're going to open up. Here we go. Oh, and they're still on their sugar. What to do when they're still on their sugar like this? I think that is a good group of bees. I hope that's coming out on the camera. I might have to move the camera for sure. Let's see. Once again, it's 60 degrees, 62 degrees out now. I'm not worried about how long I have the camera or the, the hive open. You can see they're getting a little worked up already because it is cooler. Um, I think I am gonna change. They still have a lot of sugar on this hive. I don't wanna disturb them because I don't have smoke. I don't want them up flying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, a different, feeder on it than I'd planned on. I'm going to grab, I'll show you guys here. I'm going to grab this style. All it is, I think I talked about it in a different uh, video, it's just a plastic tray. They can come up through the inside to get up, but they can't get into the feed itself. So the feed's going to be here. They crawl up and down on the inside of the hardware net and or hardware cloth and they get down to the feed that way. That way they don't get out and drown. By doing it this way, okay, I'm sure it'll be low enough. They'll still get up there. But they probably won't touch much of it until after. Look at this. Still working on that winter feed. And I'm going to keep the spacer on that I had. I hope this is coming out okay in the video. We're going to put this on. Now we get to the point of, you know, you start seeing a couple bees fall in when you put the feed in. That is natural. That happens. That's to be expected. Um, don't try to save them because the more time you spend with this open, once you've let the feed in, it'll bring them in like crazy. Now, I like to run just a little bit on the top there on the screen. That way the bees know it's there. We got it that much. No one's dead yet. We're going to throw the top cover on. No inner cover. There we go. Okay, this is hive number three. And this is the one that I screwed up on when I made it. It's got a gap in the back. The bees enjoy that because it faces south. They're all over the place over here. It's beautiful. We'll come back to it. I need to replace the entrance reducer on hive number two also. So let's pop the top here. Same story. The girls are still working on that sugar. That is wonderful. Happy campers. Oh, this is the one where the empty apigar was stuck to the frame and it was so cold out I didn't want to disturb it. And I left the Apigar container in there. It's going to have to wait. I'm not going to get these guys all up flying about right at the moment. So for these ones, because they are still up there, we will put... I'm going to play musical feeders here. I'm going to go grab a different feeder. Okay, this is a different style hive top feeder. Gosh, I hope that's showing up on the camera. Oh, 
what this is, is you have another box up on top that's made for it and it's a plastic dish um, I believe Dave at Barnyard Bees sold me this one uh, hi Dave so that just sits down on the hole like that you put the feet around the outside you make sure you have your plastic cup on the top so the bees can climb up same idea as with the other one I'll go grab feed and we'll fill it up Now this one doesn't hold a whole gallon. I believe it only holds a quarter or so. And just like the other hive top, once you get that feed in there, go ahead and close it quick because you will get the bees coming right into that. There we go. And the same thing, we're going to put the top back on. They can climb around in here. So I do have some on the inner cover or outer cover here. They can climb around through the hole that I have in the hardware net. So that works out. All right, let's move down the line here. So on this one, I'm going to put a high entrance feeder. So I have my bottle of feed. It's a quart. It has holes perforated in the edge. So this is a quart bottle full of one to one and there's perforations in the actual lid. So it has little teeny holes to allow it to drip. Um, I have to open up my screen here a little bit. Give us some room. Of course, that really made him mad. So let's make them happy. This just sits right in there like that. Goes upside down. Oh, and the girls are everywhere. Try to slowly slide it in. Give them a chance to get out of the way. And that's right up against the screen. So the screen's gonna be like a bridge over the top of it on this particular um, yellow jacket screen. They're already getting in there. And we'll see over the next couple days, we'll see this bottle just drop, just dive. Of course, you can tell they're a little worked up. Let's take a look inside. And they're just, haven't even started on this sugar on the top. But there's a few up there. Let's move to our next hive, see if it's alive or not. This is an update on that entrance feeder the very next morning. So what we're looking at, 22 degrees out before dawn, and we're having ice crystals inside the feeder. It's definitely thickened up, and there's frost on the outside of that. Um, the bees aren't anywhere near it, of course. They're in cluster inside, which is good. Just trying to show you guys that the hive top feeders we put on, although I'm not going to open them this cold, uh, they will still have heat coming up from the hive itself, from the cluster, and that will be perfectly fluid feed in there at this temperature. And this is the drawback to the external hive entrance feeder. All right, something to think about. This is hive number seven. If you guys recall, we didn't know if it was alive or not. So let's give it a bump and see. Hmm. Does not look good right off the bat. We might just have a lot of robbing going on. A lot of propolis. Oh, that hive. Okay, so we got a lot of robbing going on. This hive died out early. 
because it is full, absolutely full of honey. Oh, so full and so much propolis, I can't even get frames out. And that is just all honey. Beautiful. Well, let's keep going here. I can break through. Yep, still covered, honey everywhere. Well, I'm gonna leave that, just frame after frame here. Something happened to this hive. They didn't get in cluster in a timely manner. It wouldn't be a problem with, with mites. I don't think so because I did a good treatment on mites this year. This one's so heavy and packed with honey. Look at that. No reason they should have died. Well, for right now, I'm gonna leave this out here. It's acting as a feeder. And uh, I'll have to clean it up later in the spring, take it in, salvage the honey that I need to salvage. and do a real good. Yep. It's a dead out. Something got to them or they swarmed. Seems sort of odd they would swarm with that much feed and leave it, but they might have. Yeah, what am I gonna do with this? This has some honey, I'll just leave it out here. Okay, no feed for number seven. It is a feeder. Let's see what's going on with number eight. Because I got a lot of bees out here. Boy, the postmortem on seven is going to be interesting. Definitely going to be interesting there. Number eight does not look promising right off the bat. A lot of dead bees that weren't taken down, suggesting it's a dead out. But it is light. And yes, it is dead. It's being robbed right now. I'm gonna let them have it until I can get back to it and get it out of here. Probably be, uh, we got rain coming up the next three days and back to cold temperatures, uh, rain and snow. And I'll get out here and take these ones out of here to stop the robbing and uh, recover the honey. What the heck. Well, let's see if we can find another hive alive for our fourth feeder. Okay, there's hive number two. And I told you on that entrance reducer, I wanted to open it up a little bit. So I have a shorter one here that I can use. Of course, they're gonna be mad at me, but Slowly put that in, bring it around, pull it open, give it a flick. There you go. They'll like me, lady. They'll. They will appreciate that later, being opened up a little bit more. Let them get in and out, they're easier. Okay, here's the oddball. Hive number three. Look at those buggers coming out that crack. They'd rather use that than the front door. Beautiful. Okay, we're back over at hive number one, which is another one that was sort of weird. 
It is a dead out. Simple as that. Not gonna find anything alive in there. So that's it for that one. So that gives us three out of seven that we went into winter with. Not quite sure why we lost hive number seven. Seems really odd to have that much feed, but uh, nevertheless, it's done and we'll harvest it and use it ourselves. But everything else, the other three hives that did survive look great. Hey, if you like our content, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Sure appreciate it. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. We'll see you later.